It is a sunny day in March of 2024. And that's right. I'm back on the road, baby. It's time for a pond hunting video on the Bargain Game Hunter. So this is going to be kind of a, I guess, abbreviated pond hunt. Uh, I have one main goal today, which is I got to get my hair cut. Uh, but since I had to go out, I figured I'd check out at least a couple of my old haunts. So just to give you all kind of an idea of what's going on, um, I haven't been to a pawn shop in a good six months, uh, probably since September, maybe early October of last year. So it's been a long time. I don't know what's changed. I don't even know if these places are still in business, to be honest. Uh, I hope they are, because they're great and they've been good to me. Um, but I decided, you know what, let's go check out at least a couple, maybe three, we'll see. Um, I did not bring the Game Hunt Cam, only because my mobility is still not amazing and I don't want to have like a limp. <laughs> Uh, in the footage all the time because that's that's how my knee is. I have a brace on it now, but um, I I walk very slowly and I have a limp pretty much everywhere. So until I can uh, finally go to the doctor to get this resolved, um, I I probably won't be doing a lot of game hunt cam footage. But of course I have my phone. Um, and we're gonna try to see if we can get some game hunting done. Uh, might also stop at GameStop, we'll see how things go, but that's kind of the plan. So let's head to our first stop, which is Value Pond, and already, without even going around the corner, I can tell there's been some changes, so let's go take a look. Well, they did some pretty major changes to that place. Let's, uh, let's go take a look and see if uh, they actually have some good game deals. King has returned. Let's see what's changed in Cash America. Let's go. Hey, it's GameStop time. Let's uh, do some trade-ins and see what we can get. Okay, so... Just to, first of all, give a little bit of an explanation. As you can see, I got a fresh new haircut. It is significantly shorter than it was before. I feel so much better. Uh, so there's that. That's actually the main reason why I went out today is because I needed a haircut. But as you saw, I went to Cash America, Value Pond, and GameStop. Now, I didn't show you what I got in any of those locations, primarily because every time I was in a place where normally I can, there were too many people around and I don't just don't wanna awkwardly film when there's a bunch of people sitting around me. It's just, I don't know, I just don't think it's the greatest move because then people will be like, why are you talking to yourself? It's, it's just an awkward thing. So I like to kind of stay mostly isolated when I'm doing filming like that. So rather than going through now I actually am at a, a spot where I could do it but rather than going through it all and then going through it all again when I get home I'm just gonna do it all in one swoop um, please let me know in the comments if you like that better rather than me going through it all and then going through the final values and everything in a separate um, haul I figure, you know, this is a good way to kind of condense things a little bit. See how it see how it plays out. So, we're going to head back and uh, I'll show you everything I got from each location and their values. And uh, spoiler alert, I did very well. The King of the Ponds is back, baby. All right, so I am officially back from my game hunting adventures. And it is now time for our recap slash reveal. So like I mentioned before, uh, 
because of not having a place that was quiet for me to show off what I did get during our game hunting adventures, I didn't film a recap until now. So we're going to do, do the full reveal as well as values of one fall swoop. And to be honest, it is going to make the video a little bit shorter, but it also is going to kind of have me repeat myself less. So if you prefer this over what I usually do, which is reveal things as I go and then do a final recap at the end, let me know in the comments below, because if you do, maybe I'll start doing that in the future. But we're going to go location by location, and we're going to start off with Value Pond. So, I haven't been to these pawn shops in probably six months. It's been a long time. So naturally, things have changed. <clears throat> and in all the lo both locations I checked today, the layout of the store changed slightly. Um, Value Pond had a completely different uh, lineup of employees. Than what I'm used to, Cash America had the same crew. Um, but they did have a decent selection of games. So I did show a clip earlier of the six games that I traded into GameStop, but we're gonna go over that as well as the trading value when we go to GameStop. So I'm just gonna cover what I kept from each location. So we're gonna start off with a console I do not normally get games for just because it's not a console I'm actively trying to collect but when I find games in good condition on this console at a good price I can't say no so all the games I got from value pond I picked up for five dollars and fifty cents a piece that's basically what it broke down to so let's just go through them shall we we're going to start off with the Battle for Olympus on the NES. So as you can see, uh, this is a very nice condition copy. Apparently they got an NES. Uh, the NES console sold, but they had a bunch of games. I probably should have picked up more NES games because they had a good amount of them. And there's some kind of interesting ones you don't normally see. But I picked up three that I thought would have been good, and they were they were pretty solid. I don't know anything about these games. They're NES games. They're well before my, my game playing days. But this is called Battle of Olympus. It's a Greek mythology based game. I paid $5.50 and this one is worth $16. So good start. Next one, you've probably heard of this one. Uh, as soon as I saw it, especially considering the condition of the label. I was like, yeah, that's a that's a good pickup. We have Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest on the NES. Again, really good condition NES cart. So whoever sold this took good care of their NES. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Five fifty for this and it is worth 16 as well. And then the third game, I mostly picked this up because it sounded unique. Uh, no idea what it is. I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation. Faxenadu? Faxenadu on the NES. Uh, sounds interesting. Figured I'd give it a shot. $5.50 and this one is worth $11. So it's actually the least valuable of the NES games that I picked up. And then they also had a couple games for the PS3 that I don't see very often, and I figured I'd snag them, and both were surprisingly good pickups. So we'll start off with Phineas and Ferb Across the Second Dimension on the PS3. It's a Phineas and Ferb action-adventure game. Uh, these Disney games tend to have some decent value for some reason. Um, it's complete, it's in really good shape, so I figured, you know what, might as well. 550 is a little more than I like to pay for a, a kind of a filler PS3 game, but you know, it's one I didn't have, it's one I don't see very often. Still a good value though, I paid 550. This one is worth 10 bucks. So still a good pickup regardless. The other one that I kept is Disney Universe on the PS3. Uh, this was kind of Disney's first you know, foray into kind of a 
shared universe style game. You play as characters, you dress up in different costumes, it's co-op. Uh, I've heard mixed things about it, but I figured, you know what, might as well grab it. It's again, a game I don't see very often. $5.50 and this one is worth $9. So again, still did well on all of them. Next, we're gonna go to Cash America. My old stomping ground, my favorite pawn shop because they always do well by me. They had a decent selection. Apparently, I just missed a very large uh, PS3 lot. They still had some games left though. And one of them I am particularly excited about because it's a game I've been looking for. We're gonna start off with a random loose PSP game. And that is Smart Bomb on the PSP. Uh, this was in a bin, in the bin. Uh, it was marked at a dollar. Um, for these, because again, they gave me a bundle deal. There were different prices, but I just did the average. There was nine games. I paid, I think, $2.33 for each of these. Yeah. So, $2.33. So I paid $2.33. This is the only game I lost money on. It's actually only worth two bucks in loose condition. So, wah, wah, but it is what it is. Next, and you might be a little surprised by this one. I have my reasons, though. We have Resistance Fall of Man on the PS3. Now, I'm sure some of you may be thinking, don't you already have that game? Yes. Yes, I do. But it does not have the case. It's just a loose copy that I have in a blank PS3 case. Now I have a copy that doesn't have a manual, but it's, it has the cover art. I'd rather have the cover art. And at the price that I was getting charged for these games, two bucks, it's, you're not gonna find the case for cheaper than that. So I'm like, yeah, might as well. So now I just have an extra loose copy of Resistance, but 233 for this and it is worth eight bucks. So pretty good. This is the game I'm probably the most excited about in terms of the pickups uh, from the pawn shops because it is the one, well, technically I'm missing one more. We'll talk about that in a second. I have two of the games in this series, but I was missing the first one. It's not on my first choice of console, but I still needed it, so I got it. And that is Fear on the PS3. I have Fear 2 and Fear 3 on the 360, so now I have the first one on the PS3. It's complete. It's in good shape. Fear is a game. The first one, for some reason, I just could not find anywhere. So the fact that I finally found a copy is pretty awesome. Yeah, it's for the wrong console, but just means I can play all of them. I'm just missing Fear Files, which I believe is two of the expansions for the original Fear. So if I can find that, I'll have a complete Fear collection. Um, and then, you know, I'm, all, I'm still gonna be on the lookout to find a Xbox 360 copy of the first Fear, but at least I got this one on PS3. So I paid $2.33 and this one is worth $15 in complete form. So pretty awesome. <clears throat> Next, a couple random Wii games. Again, they, they mostly had like older gen stuff. Um, but I just, with the deals that they typically give me, I just pull out whatever I'm interested in and they usually cut me a really good price. So that was no exception this time. Uh, I have most of these other games, but I didn't have this one, so again, might as well keep pushing for the collection. We have Rayman Raving Rabbids TV Party on the Wii. It's a party game with the Rabbids. Um, it's got balance board support. Okay, sure. It's complete. It's in good shape. Figured it was worth a snack for two bucks. I paid $2.33 and this one is worth four. So it's not a huge game. It's a Wii game though. Then we have Generator Rex Agent of Providence on the Wii. Looks like an action adventure game. I Apparently it's a Cartoon Network series. I've never heard of it, but I've seen this game before. I just, you know. Uh, anyway, paid $2.33 and this one is worth $6. So a little more valuable. Last two games were for the 360 and the Xbox. This one I actually did play when it came out and actually it wasn't it wasn't bad. Uh, I do need the first game. 
based on this franchise. I don't think there was a third one, um, but I got the second one now. That is The Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian on the 360. It's a good co-op action adventure game. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a traditional movie-based game on the 360. Pretty solid. Uh, paid $233, this one is worth seven in complete form. And then this one, I was a little disappointed, but it was still a good game, so I still picked it up. Um, I found this case. <coughs> now, this case was not blank originally. It actually had the cover for Shrek Party on the Xbox, which I was like, absolutely, I'm going to pick that up. But when I opened the case, I found it had Turok Evolution on the Xbox in it, which is a game that I did want. Um, it's in pretty good shape. It's got some scratches here and there, but I think it's it's salvageable for sure. So I figured I'd snag it for two bucks. So I paid two thirty three for this loose copy, and it's worth eight. So not too bad. So now let's talk about GameStop. So of course. As you saw, I traded six games into GameStop, and let me go over that list real quick. So we had UFC 4 on the Xbox, SpongeBob the Cosmic Shake on the PS4, which is a newer game that I got at a Value Pond, The Sims 4, and The Sims 4 Cats and Dogs. Expansion. Those were all from Value Pond, so I paid five fifty a piece for those. And then at Cash America, I got SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom, so I traded in two different SpongeBob games on PS4. Um, and then a loose copy of Call of Duty Black Ops 2 on the 360. So, pretty good value. Um, Sims 4 on the PS4 is one of those weird games that shouldn't have value, but does. So if you ever find it, usually it's gonna be cheap because if you didn't know, Sims 4 is free to play. So you don't need a disc. You can literally download the game for free. So, but GameStop still takes the discs for like $6. Um, but if you have a version that comes with an expansion pack, it's quite a bit more. Um, and we'll go over the values in a second on those. So I traded in six games. And I'm gonna talk about this in a new series I'm gonna start on this channel. Actually, I'm probably gonna film the first video right after this, um, which is a kind of a deep dive into game hunting techniques, um, tips, tricks, that kind of thing. Uh, and the first one I'm going to tackle is the best way to get the most out of trading in a GameStop. So of course, whenever I trade in anything to GameStop, I always try to make sure that there's some kind of promotion going on. And they had a promo where you can trade in um, towards certain new release games and get 20% extra credit. So I got 20% extra credit on top of my um, regular value. So. Here's what I got for those games. Now, mind you, the first four I paid five fifty four each. The second uh, two I paid two thirty three for. So, UFC paid five fifty, got seven eighty in credit. SpongeBob the Cosmic Shake paid five fifty, got ten forty in credit. Sims Four paid five fifty, got seven eighty in credit. Sims 4 Cats and Dogs Bundle paid 550, got 13 in credit. Uh, Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated paid 233, got 650 in credit. And then Black Ops 2 paid 233, got 650 in credit. So I did pretty well. I uh, got a pretty good amount of credit. A grand total of all the credit was $52, and I only paid $26.66 for all those games. So what did I get with that credit? Well, one of the games that you could trade in for and get bonus credit was Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on the PS5. This is a game that came out a month or two ago. It's pretty new. Uh, it's still a $70 game. I also had my monthly $5 coupon and a $10 coupon just from points. So I didn't pay a dime out of pocket for this. <laughs> 
Um, so that's pretty beautiful. So yeah, uh, I paid nothing out of pocket and this is worth 59, according to price charting for a sealed copy. I'm not gonna open this for a while because I haven't beaten the first game, but now I have the second one already. And then of course, I had to ask while I was at GameStop to check the retro drawer. And it turns out they had some decent stuff. Uh, my GameStop, the last time it went just like, they had to liquidate their retro drawer, but they started getting some new stuff in. Uh, so I checked and I found a couple games that I didn't have. They were complete, they're in good condition. You don't see them very often. And I actually got them for a pretty solid price. Uh, another trick is if you're a pro member, you get, I think it's 5% off pretty much anything. So, or 10%, it might be 10%. So the first game I picked up, and this one was one that, again, I don't see very often, and I figured I'd snag it for a good price. And that is Time Crisis Blazing Storm on the, or Raising Storm on the PS3. It is a um, arcade shooter. It also includes two other arcade shooters, Time Crisis 4 and a pirate game, Dead Storm Pirates. Um, you can use PlayStation Move with it if you want, which is cool. It's complete. It's in really good shape. I figured I'd snag it. I paid... 17 out of pocket for it. It's actually worth 36. So this has some really good value in complete form. And then last but certainly not least is a, one of the last games made by a legendary game studio, Bizarre Creations. They created the Project Gotham series on the original Xbox. They also created Geometry Wars. They were bought by Activision and I believe this is either the last game they made or one of the last games they made. It's basically a spiritual successor to Project Gotham. That is Blur on the 360. Again, really good shape, complete copy. Um, fun arcade racer. I paid, I think it's 15 for this. Yes, and it's actually worth 30. So as you can see, I did very well. Uh, I only lost money on one game, and it was the PSP loose game, which I lost 33 cents on. Everything else, I made a pretty substantial bump up in value based on what I paid. So, uh, Game Hunter's back, baby. I'm proud of my performance. Uh, hopefully, it won't be too, too long before I can head out there. Um, because of how I get paid, because I'm back to being paid bi-weekly again, which is good and it's bad. It's good because I get bigger paychecks when I do get paid, but it's bad because I have to wait a little bit longer. Um, I probably won't be going out game hunting more than like once or twice a month in terms of pawn hunts. So I'm gonna try to make the most of that time. I do have a few places I need to return to, I uh, need to go back to the thrift shop, need to go back to um, La Familia and Simple Pond, haven't been to those, haven't been to the other value pond. This was kind of a shorter trip because I needed to get my hair cut and a few other things done. So I wasn't entirely focusing on game hunting, it was just part of it. But uh, considering what I picked up, I think I did very well and I hope you agree. So that is gonna do it for this episode of the Bargain Game Hunter. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell, that way you know when new videos drop. We have another new episode coming out next week, which is the pickup episode. Now, I will state this. Um, originally, I expected that episode to come out before this one. I tried to remove all references that hinted at this episode coming next, but in case a stray one got through, um, that was supposed to come out first and then this one but I flipped them because this one was done already and I didn't want to make y'all wait any longer than I had to for new episodes. So this one comes out first and then there's a pickups focus video coming out next week, which I think you'll enjoy. So that's gonna do it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next episode of The Bargain Game Hunter. Bye-bye.